We are now going to enter the world of reuse. Reuse. Okay, which is also actually a business model. You know, it's the continuation of what we've heard. At the Food Packaging Forum, you can go really from you know, bioassays to reusable business models in just one little, one little twist, you know? It's, uh, it's what we do, it's what we do, it's how we think about things, so much to think about. Please make your way and we will kick off this last part of the day where we will be talking about reuse, how to bring about reuse in practice, in action. Um, we'll start with a first presentation from reusables.com, which is a, a startup company. We'll be hearing from Anastasia Kiku, who is the co-founder of reusables.com. She'll set us off to understand how to bring about reuse in action. Please, can you welcome Anastasia? Thank you for your introduction, JP, and thank you for, uh, to Food Packaging Forum for having me here today. I'm Anastasia Kiku, one of the two co-founders at reusables.com. We're creating the platform for circular packaging. Before I dive into the presentation, I want to tell you a little bit about who I am and why I'm doing this work. I grew up in Russia, where I was hearing stories of my grandma, who survived the Second World War. She was telling me that over the three years of blockade of Leningrad, the only food they got was 100 grams of bread daily. The takeaway from the stories of my grandma is that with this limited resource, they were able to use it extremely efficiently and survive for a long 900 days. And then I moved to Canada. And so the convenience culture and the obsession of, uh, with single use that America, North America has. We all know that um, single use items and the convenience leads to very sad outcomes. So I decided to start Reusables.com with my co-founder just over two years ago. Reusables.com is on a mission to simplify the transition from single use to reuse for food businesses and consumers. We'll see if a lot of those logos are familiar to the European audience, but the point here is that the solution we have developed applies to many use cases. We have a um, pilot hour solution in food service operations such as universities, corporate offices, also in food businesses, grocery stores, festivals, events, you name it. It works. Now, when we think about the value chain for reuse and how complex solu the solution is, we ourselves don't think that we can solve the big problem. Where we have a unique differentiation and where, where we really want to play is to be the platform to help all the different stakeholders and uh, organizations in the value chain to transition to reuse. So what does this really mean? Essentially, we're creating the platform where cleaning providers, operations providers, food businesses, and many, many other stakeholders and cities can plug in for the whole municipality to transition to a circular economy. Now, we have been hearing a lot about reuse, and essentially, experts have proven that reusable food packaging is the most sustainable food packaging at scale. We're also hearing that a lot of the brands are establishing targets, whether realistic or not, to transition to a more sustainable way to serve their food to go. The takeaway here is that the reusable food packaging market is growing exponentially and is going to be over 100 billion globally in less than a decade. Enter reusables.com. Our whole mission is to make reuse seamless. The approach we're taking is to create the digital infrastructure to enable a circular economy. Essentially, we want to enable food businesses to replace their single-use packaging with tech-enabled reusables and make that process super sim simple. One of the key philosophies that we share is that we don't think that the transition to reuse necessarily needs creating a lot of new infrastructure and rethinking how we do things. We think there is a lot of opportunity to utilize already existing infrastructure and retrofit it to be part of circular economy. So, for example, when we think about cleaning and dishwashing, chances are every city already has access dishwashing, and there is um, dishwashers in restaurants, catering businesses, etc., that are not being utilized to their full potential. We want to digitize those assets and create, make them part of circular economy going forward. So, how does our system work? We make it super seamless for consumers to opt in reuse. Traditional models have used deposits, apps, QR code scanning, all those things, and we think we need to go a step further and make it even easier than that. So essentially, our system connects the reusable assets directly to your payment card. Um, that way, if you're paying with your credit card, there is no extra step of downloading the app, paying the deposit, or any of those barriers. 
To return the reusable assets, you can see all the participating locations in a given city. For example, in Vancouver, Canada, where we started operating, we now have over 100 drop-off locations located throughout the city, and our vision is to densify that return infrastructure even further. We have recently announced a partnership with Uber Eats, and the big vision there we're working towards is next time you place your order for takeout, the driver can collect the old container and give you new ones. So it will be just as convenient as disposing of trash shortly. So to tell you a bit more about where we are as a business, in the last two years we have grown to over 100 clients, that's including Canada as well as the US, um, let's see if we recognize some of the logos. For example, Disney, everyone's familiar with them. So they used our solution to have the first film production set to be 100% reusable, and the amount of impact created was enormous. Over the four months, they have diverted more than 10 tons of single-use packaging waste just by making this simple change. Uh, to date, we have replaced more than 150,000 single-use containers with reusables. I know that in the grand scheme of things, that's just the beginning, but it's already impressive traction, showing us that there is businesses uh, and there's a lot of demand for a solution like this. The one thing to highlight here is the return rate. Um, across all of our different customer segments, we have been able to achieve 98.5% return rate, and that's really one of the critical elements of making a circular economy work. What I mean by that is that um, oftentimes producing a durable, reusable asset actually takes more resources to begin with. So if you're producing a stainless steel container versus a single-use packaging one, stainless steel container needs to have a certain number of reuses or rotations in order to break even with the resources it took to produce the single-use one and then create positive impact. So when you do an LCA, um, a reuse system when they're, you're using plastic or stainless steel, actually has to have at least a 90% return rate in order for that math to work out. So with 98.5% return rate, our container is used on average 67 times, and it takes the container 17 times to break even. So what you're seeing here is that from 17 times to 67, that's all the positive impact that we're being able to capture. So the conversation here, um, and it's really exciting to hear it evolve this way. If five years ago it was, can reuse really make sense, and whether there is enough evidence, it's amazing to hear that now we're thinking, okay, reuse is the most sustainable solution. How do we make it default? So I'll tell you about a few learnings that we've had on this journey, uh, and I'm sure there will be more to come as well. The first thing is infrastructure. I think we need to acknowledge that currently our municipal and federal infrastructure is not set up for reuse. We have um, created a system where waste management and a lot of transportation to landfill or incineration and sometimes recycling is predominant, but we need to primarily rethink um, the infrastructure that's required to be for reuse. As I mentioned initially, our philosophy is to first digitize the existing infrastructure in cities and make sure that it can be utilized in order to enable a circular economy. When we're thinking about kind of the total volume that we expect from reuse, there will need to be some extra infrastructure as well. Um, by infrastructure, mainly we mean kind of cleaning hubs and washing hubs for logistics as well. We think that uh, municipalities are best positioned to be the owners of that infrastructure and make it a shared resource for many reuse providers and many food businesses to utilize as well. Now, talking about the experience, I already mentioned some of the barriers that deposit models and um, mobile app models have. So having the um, kind of any kind of tracking and checkout experience be super seamless for users, for businesses, is extremely important. We've learned that food businesses are extremely operationally efficiency oriented, and they don't have an extra second, extra three seconds to do any kind of scanning or tracking. Now, when we're talking about um, transitioning to this new economy, it's really important to think about it holistically. When I was talking about the example of the return rates, I think it really highlights that we cannot just produce more durable containers, put the food in a more durable container and think that you're solving the problem. Actually, the problem and the impact is not realized until you capture the container back and reuse it a certain number of times. Earlier today, we were talking about the importance of materials choice and the safety of the materials that we use. That's why in our system, we have made a preference for stainless steel containers with silicone lids. We have been very intentional about um, using materials that are safe for food application, as well as easily uh, recyclable at the end of life. 
Stainless steel, as we mentioned, has infinite um, recycling without loss of value. And then for the silicone that we use, we have a partner that's able to downcycle those lids and make them into uh, playground mats. So what is the technology that we have developed and we're using to power the circular economy? It largely consists of the digital side as well as the physical side. So I'll start with the physical side first. Essentially, we have uh, tracking tags that can go on any container, and we use that to circulate the containers in the system. We have also designed a proprietary return bin that makes accepting returns super simple. Um, it actually doesn't open unless you're returning a reusable, so it prevents from trash as well, and it's a very practical application for collection. And then on the digital infrastructure side, there is a few pieces. So there is the user app that's currently optional. There is the store app that um, a food business uses to check out and keep track of inventory of those containers. And most importantly, in the back end, we have this operator portal that enables us to track all the cleaning, all the logistics, the inventory, the impact, and to aggregate the data on what's happening in the system. So here I'm giving you a sense of what this tap to reuse experience looks like and um, how seamless it actually is. As you see here, the customer taps the card to pay for the drink. And then on the cafe side, they tap the card, uh, the cup on the reader to assign it directly to that payment method. Essentially what happens is that if user returns within two weeks, um, nothing happens and their data is deleted. And if they don't return within two weeks, then we charge them for that cup and they can have a um, deposit returned within the next 30 days in case they choose to return. So bottom line here is we're keeping people accountable for their actions and making sure we have incentives as well as disincentives for uh, returning that. As I mentioned already, we have um, traceability built into our model and we're able to have very interesting consumer uh, usage data as well as obviously impact metrics such as carbon emissions avoidance and plastic waste reduction as well. So just uh, giving you a little more color how it looks like in practice as well. The first application you can see that's obviously in a coffee shop. This one is a university campus in a cafeteria. It also works in grocery store and this one is a festival. And um, just wanted to give you a sense of the team that we have put together. It's really diverse and um, interdisciplinary. And we're really looking at the problem from grocery uh, retail background as well as technology background, um, customer experience background, and uh, product background as well. So happy to answer any questions now. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, I, I see the questions. Um, what we'll do, as you're part of the panel, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll have the questions as part of the panel. Okay, for Anastasia, yeah? Yep. We'll do it that way? Yep. Sounds good. Okay, same goes for online, okay? I, I'm not forgetting you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much.